guys? Anthony here with Empire Music. Yes, it's really me. Um, but anyway, we are here with a super, super cool new release from the geniuses at Earthquaker Devices. Um, the Afterneath V3 or version 3. So I have been a long time massive fan of the Afterneath pedal. I think it's one of the coolest reverb pedals out there. Um, it, it's very unique in how um, it, it kind of creates its reverb. It's made up of a bunch of short delays, which as I get through some of the settings on here, um, you'll kind of see or you'll kind of hear. The one thing I always wanted with this pedal was an expression pedal feature, um, specifically tied to the drag knob. We'll get into kind of what these knobs are. And well, Earthquaker <laughs> devices being awesome. Sorry, Brent, killing the sound guy there. Um, they did exactly that. They put the expression feature on the, the drag knob and they moved that. And I'll show you down in the camera below there. So um, they also added a few different modes. I think it's six different modes now. So um, the short delays that kind of make up this reverb are have different voicings to it now. Um, and they kind of go through um, octave sweeps, pentatonic scales, major scale i think it's a, i think it's a lydian major i think that's what it is and um i think a minor scale so it's kind of cool and you'll hear some of the differences between that especially with the expression pedal so if you we note down here in the camera this is my old version this is mine that i brought from home this is the new one you see we got a mode knob here and as we flip through that those lights are going to change color um and that's just representing the different modes or like the different voicings that the delayed signal or the short delays are, are giving you to kind of change how the reverb interacts musically and harmonically if you want that. Um, and then also notice that reflect is now here. So they moved that, the drag is now in the middle. Other than that, it's kind of the same. Uh, I have old school one. This might even be a version one that has the noisy switch on it. We now have the flex, flexi switch, which means um, if you just, hold down, it's off. So it's a momentary or it's a latch. Um, that's kind of cool. It, like it kind of just knows what you want to do whenever you're playing. So that, that's a slick feature that's kind of integrated through a lot of the Earthquaker line as of recent years. Um, so we'll get this out of here then because we don't need that. That's the old guy. We know the difference is there. Um, now for that intro thing, what I had going on was not straight bass because I know I'm, I'm an awful guitar player and no one wants to hear that. So I have a little octave up pedal. It's an EHX pitchfork that I put on there. I use that a lot. And I'm also running through a way huge pork loin to add a little bit of overdrive onto that. Um, I'm gonna take the expression feature out momentarily to kind of let you hear exactly what's going on with the pedal. Um, so we're gonna start on mode one and I'm not gonna go through every specific mode would be here all day long, um, but just kind of go through some of the sounds and we're gonna go. What's really cool about this pedal is that it, it can be in the box as far as a reverb pedal. I just know that about the Afterneath. If you want a somewhat typical reverb sound, you can do that with this pedal. You just have to know what settings can kind of get you out of control. What I have found now that they've moved these pedals is length and reflect can really, really get way, way out there. Almost like, even beyond like self oscillation or like it's just really, really loud and intrusive sound that if you don't, can't control that, you can be in a, not the best situation musically. I know I've been on a gig where I've had these turned up and I turn the pedal off and I go back to click it on and like they're still screaming loud. So we're in the middle of like a tune that doesn't call for any of that. And like all of a sudden a wall of sound just comes on. Um, it happens when you're into pedals as much as I am. It's bound to happen. So anyway, I like to start with those kind of back. So I have length just barely on, reflects all the way off. Um, so we'll kind of hear what this sounds like right now. This is kind of typical. I'm going to go straight up bass. No overdrive, no octave up on there. Volume up might help, right? Actually, I'm gonna turn diffuse down because what diffuse is doing, 
is it's kind of separating. You can really hear now with this turned back how this is a bunch of short delays. Check it out. Hear it ping-ponging around. So really, you hear kind of a non-rhythmic. It doesn't really have any rhythm to it like a typical delay. But this, that, that, all of those delays are adding together to kind of make the reverb sound. So when we turn diffuse up, so now that's on zero, basically. You hear each one. Sorry, Brent. You hear each one. <laughs> he's smiling. You hear each one kind of separately. Now we turn this up all the way, and you're going to hear that smooth out a lot. You still hear them, but they have kind of now like reverb on each individual delay, I guess for lack of a better term. I never really thought of it that way, but now hearing it, it kind of sounds that way. So we'll go, we'll go back all the way off. Sharper and a little more smooth. Slight. So we'll settle on the medium point there, 50%. Actually, that sounds smoother than this. Uh, maybe not. Whatever, I like it. So, if we played something with that on there, I'll put the octave up so you hear like... so far outside of the box, I mean, that's pretty, pretty normal delay-ish kind of little modulation on there. It's obviously a little bit weird, um, but you could use that really anywhere um, that you would use reverb or your typical reverb. You can even shorten that up a little bit with the length. So that's what the diffuse knob's doing. Length is obviously like the amount of delay that's in there. So how long that, the, the, or the reverb's gonna be. So short, then long. This is, gets out of control quickly. So like I said, that'll just stay there. So let's, let's, let's fall somewhere in the middle maybe a little under midway. It still hangs around, it's super cool. Turn that back a little bit. Now, dampen, uh, just like in a lot of delay pedals, reverb pedals, that's kind of like, a, I always consider that like a tone control for the reverb. So you have all the way counterclockwise, it's bright. If we want that to be a little darker sounding, you hear how that just kind of adds a little bit of mellowness to the tonality of the reverb signal. We'll fall in the middle there at 50%. And then reflect essentially is like, so this thing's built to be kind of like in a cave sounding. So reflect is like the depth of the cave. So imagine you're in a, a smaller room when it's counterclockwise, then we move all the way up and you're in a, a huge room, a very cavernous room. You can even hear just my fingers kind of rubbing on the string there. Kind of see what I mean, like user beware, because that you know I didn't I had those on full, and that thing just goes for days and days and days and days. Like it it, it can be really really intense. So you got to just kind of heavy sense of experimentation with this thing, knowing the pedal when and when not to use some of the the otherworldly features of this thing. Um, and then drag is essentially uh, the it's dragging all of those short delay signals. So it's basically warping those all that short delay, you hear each one of those hits, that drag 
it's a kind of how all those interact with each other, basically from what I'm gauging. And then mix, you got just bass or, or guitar or whatever you're using, just instrument, raw instrument, and then all the way to like affected signal, just like any other mix. So we'll leave that at halfway. Now, um, the key here is in the drag. So if we lay this on, put that little C major, A minor chord, drag does is that a it's almost like a filter sweep on all that it almost adds a lot like a, a pitch shift kind of thing to it so through the modes we run like I think they're basing like the first few ones are like octaves but you'll hear as we get to I think yes I think that was like a chromatic sweep up then I think we get into this is like a minor scale sweep up. Let's play, let's play a minor chord. And then here is, I believe, the major, which is Lydian. sharp 11 tonality that comes out in the Lydian scale, it's, it's cool. And then the longer we have some of these other knobs, so we add length and reflect, we'll go those back to halfway. with the drag knob at that point because everything's lasting a lot longer um, and then I what I have found really cool two additions I mean these are all additions to it but um, this last mode is like a choppier octave up it's not a smooth octave up so it's almost like a step filter which is cool two octave jump but then this is just a fifth so the second to last mode you're going up a fifth it's cool so that kind of runs you through some of the most now I didn't have expression uh, plugged in there to kind of show you the full range of this knob, the drag knob. So when we plug in an expression pedal, and I'm using like a cheaper EHX one, the range on it isn't amazing, I'm kind of finding, um, but it gets the job done for, um, you know, demo's sake. So um, I'm going to leave that on that, that fifth up, which I, I really dug. So basically with the expression, now we're controlling that drag. So the way that I was turning that knob with my hand, I can now do with the foot pedal is essentially what that is. A, a, a better, no offense to EHX, not the greatest, um, it's not the greatest expression pedal. If you got like a Moog or I know the, uh, the Dunlop mini volume pedal has a nice wide, broader range than this. Those are super cool, but get, get whatever you want to use. Um, so now you're going to hear that, I have it still set to the fifth. Um, you're going to hear that now being controlled with my foot, which is cool. So if you're playing something, I'll throw a little overdrive on, still got the octave up on there. so far out pitch wise because you're only going up a fifth you don't have all those chromatic passing tones that can kind of get 
little squirrely as far as, you know, uh, pitch wise or like key center. So now we'll just go up an octave on the same kind of deal, but just up the octave on this is the last setting on here. Now, as we get into some of those other modes, you're gonna hear it get a little bit pitchier. Um, I'm gonna just bypass, I'm gonna go back to the first one, which is like, I think unquantized, it might have been chromatic, I can't remember. It's in the, it's in the manual. It sounds weird, you know that. this one we'll show you one more here I think we're getting into I guess is the minor scale here whatever <laughs> sounds like it um, cool we'll turn that up a little bit we'll just do a little more for you here so I still got the octave up and some overdrive on there that's I'll roll the front pickup off get a little tighter of a tone kind of the ins and outs a little bit of the pedal. Obviously there's a lot more under the hood that you can do with this than I'm showing you in a what 15, 20 minute video, which is already probably too long of hearing me talk and make this kind of noise. But uh, so the Afterneath version three, brand new from Earthquaker Devices for 2020 here. We have them in stock at Empire Music, EmpireMusicOnline.com. If you have any questions about uh, this pedal, any basses, anything pedal orientated, um, I'm here for you, 412-343-5299. It's anthony at empiremusiconline.com. And uh, yeah, thanks for checking it out, guys.